So how do you do this uh, in an optical manner? So the idea is to use what is called as a uh, 90 degree hybrid. So this design is going to help us uh, get rid of this electronic phase control in a homodyne or a heterodyne system. So what does it do? Uh, you have the signal, you have the local oscillator. Uh, let's take about one polarization. Think about one polarization right now. So assume that the signal and the local oscillator are in the same polarization. Uh, this part is the same as what we had seen earlier, a uh, two by two coupler followed by a balanced receiver. But before that, we are uh, introducing two more couplers. Okay. In the signal path, you have a coupler. And in the yellow path also you have a coupler with a slight difference that one of the couplers have a 90 degree hybrid. So the signal is, uh, this is again a 50-50 uh, coupler or a 3 dB coupler. So the signal output is going to be ES divided by root 2. And there is going to be a phase difference between the two. So the second arm is uh, uh, can, can get represented by J E S divided by root 2, which is shown here at the input here. So that is falling at the input of the second coupler. So let's call this as coupler 1, coupler 2, coupler 3 and coupler 4. Okay. Um, First output of the second coupler is E L O by root 2. The second output is J times E L O by root 2 because of the 90 degree phase shift between the two uh, outputs of a directional coupler. After that, there is a 90 degree phase shift once again. This is the phase shifter we are introducing. So that uh, gives, rotates the phase by further 90 degree. So you get minus uh, L O by root 2 at the output here. So the second input to the fourth coupler is minus ELO by root 2. And of course, the second input to the third coupler is just ELO divided by root 2. So the input to the two 2x2 two two couplers, which feeds to the balanced receivers have changed. So how does this work out? So you can, uh, as in the previous case, we can just write down the transfer function. So this is the transfer function of the coupler. And um, the E1, which is the output of the second coupler, uh, the input to this is ES by uh, root 2. So that root 2 is here, you have ES. And the, out, uh, the second input is ELO by root 2. And this is the uh, electric field corresponding to E1 and E2. And you can find out what is the current at the output of the photodiode just by doing a mod square. And you can find out uh, delta i, which is i1 minus i2, is rd as alo sine omega if plus phi st. Uh, sorry. Now let's also calculate uh, what is the output e3 and e4. So going by the same uh, method, you write down the transfer function of this coupler. You know the input uh, to this coupler is uh, J E S by root 2 and the input, the second input is minus E L O. Carry out the expansion, carry out the mod square, what you will end up as delta I, which is the difference between I3 and I4. Uh, and remember to take I4 minus I3 here. If I do I4 minus I3, you get R D A S A L O cos omega I F T. So if I uh, combine uh, from the top balance detector, you have delta I as this and the bottom balance detector is giving you uh, delta I as uh, this term, which is the quadrature component. If you ignore your omega IF, you ended up getting sine of the phase that you want to determine and cos of the phase that you want to determine. Okay, so you actually got the phase because you know the sign of the phase, you know the cos of the phase, so you know what is the tan of the phase, so you know what the phase is, tan inverse of um, quadrature component divided by the in phase component. Okay? There is no phase locking required. So the two balanced photo detectors are generating the in phase and the quadrature components of the signal. So how did you beat the whole process? You are now determining the instantaneous phase, you are determining the phase at every instant of time. 
right? So if this output is fed to a analog to digital converter, so let's say this uh, output of the top balance detector is uh, uh, giving you delta i q that is fed to a uh, ADC and delta i uh, delta i i is also fed to an ADC. So you have digital samples corresponding to the sine and the cosine of the phase that you want to determine. So you can find out exactly what the phase of your output signal is. So you exactly determine the in phase and quadrature components of your input signal. So the phase locked loop, phase locked loop is not necessary in this case because you know what the i and q is. But of course, the slow phase drift that was experiencing, that uh, the uh, signal was experiencing and the LO is experiencing, that still needs to be corrected. But you can correct that through digital signal processing. So phase noise correction is still to be done. That needs to be corrected. And of course, there is could be a, if, if there is an IF uh, there, or if there is, even if you intended to keep IF as zero, the, you know that uh, la the laser lines are not really uh, stable in the sense that there could be a very small drift in the center frequency of the laser. So even though you wanted to do a, a homodyne uh, measurement, actually what ends up happening is there is a small IF frequency. So there's something called as frequency offset. So that also needs to be compensated. But all that can be compensated now very easily in the digital domain because you have now the in-phase and quadrature components of your voltages. So you can completely uh, determine the uh, amplitude, the phase and all the corrections that you want to do, now you can do in the digital signal processing. So this leads to the new domain, uh, DSP domain uh, in coherent communication system. So you don't have to do any kind of electronic phase lock loop or anything. You just have to determine the in-phase and com uh, you just need to have the digitized samples corresponding to the in-phase and the quadrature components of, this, uh, of the signal and you can do a complete uh, extract demodulation process. Uh, how do you do it now for a polarization multiplexed uh, signal? You just do a phase diversity, a polarization diversity scheme. So you have a PB, you have a PBS, one of that corresponds to a perpendicular polarization, similar PBS for the yellow for the parallel uh, which you split it into parallel and perpendicular polarization. So you have the 90 degree hybrid uh, followed by the balanced receiver for parallel polarization, another one for the perpendicular polarization. So you have uh, Xi, Xq, Yi and Yq. You have the in-phase and quadrature components or both the polarizations available. After ADC, you can have four digital sequences corresponding to each of this information. Okay. So this is how a 100 gig commercial transmitter today works. You have from the uh, application specific uh, chip, you have uh, the ASIC which uh, would have generated your data stream. So you have your 20 GBPS, uh, 25 GBPS driving the two uh, IQ modulators. Uh, this is for uh, parallel polarization and this is for perpendicular polarization. You do a modulation um, uh, such that uh, you have uh, you, you're modulating with QPSK transmission. So polarization multiplexed QPSK will give you 100 GBPS. You combine the two polarization transmit. In the receiver, you have two PBS, two sets of hybrid to a four channel ADC. Digital samples corresponding to the transmitted symbols. Uh, it's not exactly corresponding to the transmitted signals. You still have to correct for the frequency offset, phase noise and uh, the dispersion. Remember we talked about uh, dispersion compensation in the digital domain that needs to be carried out. So uh, a transponder actually looks like this. So you initially uh, on, on one side you will have the standard uh, MSA interface which is the interface which carries maybe the ethernet frames or you know depending on the type of uh, data that you are using. Uh, these will be in uh, several uh, 2.5 giga gigabits per uh, second electrical lines or several 5 gigabits per second electrical line. All that is multiplexed into four uh, lines of 25 GBPS, which drives your uh, 
IQ modulators, essentially the uh, laser diode, the PBS and the IQ modulators etc. all sit inside this gets transmitted. The receiver is also in the same module. Um, again that also the same local oscillator laser can be used or a different local oscillator laser can be used and you will get four streams of uh, data from the uh, four uh, analog to digital converter channels which are processed and ready to be uh, reused. That gets uh, multiplexed and uh, 25 Gbps gets split back to whatever data streams they came in as and it gets uh, transferred through the standard uh, interfaces. Uh, this is to give you an idea of the kind of signal processing that uh, goes on. So this is data from our lab. Uh, you will see that uh, this, uh, so you, uh, your incoming uh, data has all these impairments corresponding to uh, dispersion, it, it has uh, polarization mixing, it has polarization mode dispersion, it has frequency offset, it has phase noise. So you correct for all these impairments one by one through specific algorithms and these algorithms can be written out in the digital signal processing domain. So the output after uh, dispersion compensation uh, uh, looks like uh, this. This is the output after uh, frequency multiplexing. Uh, after frequency offset correction between the transmitter and receiver, this is how the constellation looks like. Uh, this is all constellation for one polarization. Okay? So after you have recovered the clock, you identified where is the middle of your sample. This is how the constellation uh, looks like. And after doing a phase noise, you see there is a significant phase noise here. After doing a phase noise compensation, you get a constellation like this and you carry out some adaptive filtering to remove any residual intersample interference either because of the chromatic dispersion or because of the roll off of the filters in the different uh, elements, electrical elements, you will get your QPSK constellation. So this is how you receive your uh, QPSK constellation and after going through several of these algorithms, you can uh, extract your constellation. So there is a video that is going to be posted on uh, how this coherent transmission works. Please take a look at that video. This video is shot in our lab. Uh, these modules do not look big, it is just that when we draw on the sheet it looks big. Uh, the modules are uh, pluggable modules actually. So it is just the electrical interfaces that go in and go out as I earlier uh, said. So these are how the pluggable modules look like. You plug it in and uh, here is where the fiber comes out. So every module will have two parts, one corresponding to the incoming uh, transmit and the other one is uh, receive. Um, some example specification for a uh, commercial coherent transponder module. Uh, this is taken from a research paper. They are trying to compare two types of uh, modules. And uh, for example, this is the uh, standard that uh, corresponds to 100 Gbps uh, optical interfacing uh, module, MSA interface. The line rate is 128 Gbps. The extra 28 Gbps is for actually forward error correction. FEC type, the error correction type is uh, uh, soft or LDPC uh, 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 kind of coding. We will not get into the details of that. The threshold is 2 into 10 power minus 2 that is standard because the assumption is that in the physical layer if you get a 2 into 10 power minus 2 BER the LDPC can take care of bringing it back to uh, of the order of minus 9 and so on. Uh, the module can compensate for a dispersion of this much. It means that the dispersion compensating module inside the DSP inside can compensate for a dispersion of up to 50,000 picosecond per nanometer. Okay? Distance is up, up to 3000 uh, kilometers. So that is roughly 50,000 divided by you know, uh, the dispersion of the fiber. It can compensate, it has algorithms to compensate for polarization mode dispersion up to 30 picosecond. Um, the receiver sensitivity which is again decided by the local oscillator power is from minus 18 to minus 24 to guarantee this kind of uh, BER. It says that it can do a full C band and power consumption is 80 watt and the size you see it is 7 inch by 5 inch. So all that is integrated including the DSP, including the um, signal processing to compensate for all these uh, impairments is small packaged 7 by 5 size. Of course, this paper was about uh, comparing 
another uh, interface which is of much smaller size and much uh, lower power. So, this is again a very uh, thriving research area as to how to now keep designing algorithms which are uh, less power hungry, which has less number of operations so that you can do the digital compensation much more efficiently in an ASIC. Mm -hmm.